Introduction to Power Flow Analysis 2. Types of Nodes newton repson Method So let us start from where we had left in the previous episode of this Power Flow Analysis series and actually try to solve the Power Flow Equation. We have seen the Power Flow Equation in a compact form. S equals to V entry Y dot Y EQ V conjugate. To solve the Power Flow Equation, it would be better to write the equation in the summation form. For every node i, si equals to vi times summation of k from 0 to n, y eq i k conjugate, v k conjugate. If we look closely at the summation form of the equation, we can see that it has n separate equations, where n is the number of nodes. It also involves two unseparate variables, si and vi for every node i. This means that we will need to set n variables as fixed to solve for the rest of the n unknown variables. OK, but we also need to remember that s and v are complex variables, and a complex variable contains two parts of information. In rectangular coordinates, the information is stored in the real and imaginary parts of the variable. In polar coordinates, it is stored in the magnitude and phase angle of the variable. Usually, people write the complex power s in the rectangular coordinate form. So s equals to p plus jq, where p is the real power and q the reactive power. On the other hand, people usually write the complex voltage v in a polar coordinate form. So V equals to U entry Y dot E to the J theta power, where U is the magnitude of voltage and theta the phase angle of voltage. People use both forms of coordinates to write the node admittance Y EQ. But in this video, we will stick to the polar coordinate form. So Y EQ equals Y bar entry Y dot e to the j phi power, where y bar is the magnitude of node admittance, and phi the phase angle of node admittance. So with the complex version of the summation form, we actually will have two n separate equations and four n variables, two n of which must be held fixed in order to solve for the other two n variables. Here is the detailed equations for solving p, q, u, and theta. If for each node, two of these variables are given, then the remaining two n unknown variables will form an exactly determined system of two n equations. Depending on the known and unknown variables, we can categorize the nodes in a power system into several types of buses. Below are three most common types. PQ bus. At this type of node, the real and reactive power are given, and we solve for u and theta. PU bus. At this type of node, the real power P and the voltage magnitude U are given, and we solve for the reactive power Q and the voltage phase angle theta. Select bus. At this type of node, the magnitude and phase angle of voltage are known. The real and reactive power are unknown, but it is not relevant. Note that while these are the most common types of nodes, other types of nodes do exist. For instance, the demand load of a node may have a constant PQ ratio and a fixed value of U. For demand nodes with constant impedance, the corresponding node must satisfy the constraint si equals to ui square divided by zi conjugate. In any case, we will always need two n equations additional to the complex form of the power flow equation to solve the system. Let's take a look at what are usually modeled by each type of nodes. We usually model demand node and variable renewable energy without batteries with PQ buses. Meanwhile, conventional generators and dispatchable renewable energy are usually modeled as PU buses. Finally, grid-forming inverters with batteries 
are examples for Slack buses. Please note that the purpose of this chart is not to provide a clear-cut categorization. The type of bus of a node depends on the controllability of the devices connected on the node. For example, VRE with grid support inverters can be viewed as a PU bus to some extent. Meanwhile, when a conventional generator reaches its reactive power limit, it can turn into a PQ bus. To demonstrate how the newton repsa method works, assume for the sake of simplicity, all the nodes in the power system are PQ buses, and we solve for the voltage magnitude and phase angle for each node. We do so by starting with an initial guess of u and theta, which we just call them u g and theta g. Next, let us insert u g and theta g into the power flow equation. This will result in the first guess of p and q, denoted as p g and q g. Now we can update u g and theta g by the following rule: u theta g equals to u theta g minus j inverse times p q g minus p q, where j is the Jacobian matrix. We then repeat this procedure until u g and theta g converge to a fixed point. To calculate the Jacobian matrix, let us view the real and reactive power as functions of voltage magnitude and phase angle, and take the partial derivatives of them according to the summation form of the power flow equation. We can therefore obtain the following equations for the partial derivatives. Here, the later delta indicates the conical delta function. So what are the problems when using newton repson method? The first is that the final solution is sensitive to the initial guess. Therefore, there is no guarantee that the final solution converges to the high voltage solution we want. Also, for each iteration, the Jacobian matrix and its inverse must be recalculated again. This increases the computational burden of the method. In the next videos, we will discuss methods that deal with these shortcomings.